another edition of The Word on Woodward. I'm your host, Daniela Bruce, alongside my co-host, Art Regner, and joining us today from Ann Arbor, Michigan, the head coach of men's hockey at the University of Michigan, Mel Pearson. Mel, thank you so much for joining us. I see you've already got the Duel in the D trophy. Obviously, Michigan is the reigning champ at the, the Duel in the D here at Little Caesars Arena in Detroit. And I just have to ask you how you lifted it to put it on your desk. Did you do that all by yourself? Well, no, I got a little bit of help. It's quite heavy. I was surprised uh, the first time we won it since I've returned to Michigan when uh, actually someone lifted. I, I can't believe how heavy it is. It's a very well uh, constructed trophy and it's one that we enjoy having uh, over in Ann Arbor. It is definitely, definitely heavy. Now, if you're successful at defending your title, the duel in the D, how many of your players will you allow to pick it up? Like, will you say, okay, four guys, one, two, three, all four of you raise it up? Or do you have that figured out yet, Mel? Oh, we don't tell them anything. We let them experience for themselves. But uh, after a long, uh, usually hard-fought game, it's heavy. I don't know exactly how much it weighs. But uh, again, like I said, it's been well put together. It's an it's a awesome trophy. It's actually pretty cool. And uh, again, it's going to be a, a great battle for it this year, and uh, we're hoping to keep it here. We've had it the last four years in a row, so uh, we like to go for five. Five would be awesome. Yeah, you'll be going for number five this Saturday at Little Caesars Arena at 7 p.m. Michigan and Michigan State. It's always a heated matchup. You mentioned that it's intense, it's competitive. Mel, just describe that rivalry and being a part of it. Yeah, I've been a part of it at least uh, 28 years, I guess, and uh, it, it's a special rivalry. I, I feel it's the best rivalry in college hockey, bar none, uh, especially when you're only separated by 60 miles. Uh, the state of Michigan, you're either Michigan or you're Michigan State. There's no in-between. You can't root for both of them. It's one or the other. Uh, in every sport, it's hard fought, and that's what uh, healthy rivalries bring out. And we do have a healthy rivalry with Michigan State. Uh, on the ice, you can throw the records out, you can throw the standings out, it doesn't matter. When we play them, uh, they're always hard fought, uh, great games, exciting games, a little bit of everything, so I'm sure Saturday will be another uh, a great battle. Mel, you've, you've kind of touched on this, but whether it's at Mon or Yost Ice Arena, uh, it is an intense rivalry. I have been to many, many Michigan, Michigan State clashes on the ice, and uh, there's always something going on. I mean, there's always a, a storyline you don't think about. But when you do add in the element of uh, NHL arena, whether it be Joe Lewis or now, as you said, Little Caesars, I would imagine that there isn't much you have to say to the team to get them motivated to take the ice. Well, if you do, uh, we don't have the right players in our locker room. Uh, no. You don't. You shouldn't have to say anything, and, and nor will they. Uh, I mean, we didn't play this past weekend. Uh, our guys were already talking about it last week. So uh, we have a number of Michigan players. Like I say, you grow up in the state of Michigan. It's one or the other, and uh, you know they soon or quickly get the word uh, to our players who might be from out of state who don't understand the rivalry, or from some of our Canadians who might not get it, but. Uh, hopefully once they got down here in the fall, they saw the football, you know, you see the basketball the other night. Uh, you know, we played in it a little bit, so uh, we played two games already against Michigan State. So if they don't understand it now, again, like I said, we don't have the right guys in our locker room. I think they get it, Mel. We talked to some of your players on Game Day Live last week at Little Caesars Arena, and Art asked them how long it took for them to develop that hatred for Michigan State, and their answer was as soon as we stepped foot on campus. So they definitely get it. It's a great, it's a great rivalry. But your team this year, a lot of excitement around the Wolverines. They are ranked number fourth. You guys are ranked number four right now in the country. What has the season been like for you, and what kind of expectations are you hoping for as the season moves forward? Well, uh, it's been an interesting year to say the least. Uh, uh, obviously, it, it started this summer with the draft and when we had four of the first five players picked in the NHL draft, uh, you know, brought a lot of uh, eyes on our program, a lot of noise to the program. Uh, most of it good, uh, but there are some distractions that come along with that. But we've got a very talented team. Uh, we've got a nice blend of some highly skilled players and some uh, uh, veteran players, uh, you know, who provided outstanding leadership for this group this year. I think one of the biggest questions was in net, who was going to replace Strauss, Strauss Mann, who was currently, you know, on the Olympic team with the, the U.S. Uh, this year over in Beijing. But who was going to replace Strauss, 
who was a Big Ten goalie of the year. Uh, that was the biggest question. And then along comes Eric Patillo. Now, we knew we had something special in Eric last year. And, you know, he only got in five, six games. But the games he played, he played extremely well. It's a Buffalo Sabres draft pick in the third round. And right from day one, he has been very, very good. He started every game for us this year. Uh, he's probably been our team MVP at this point. U of M is used to this. I mean, they know that if there's a big tournament or something, they're going to end up losing players. And yet, when you look at this roster, it's still loaded. I mean, it really is. I mean, you know, you said Portillo. It's 21-7, and 2 2.2 goals against average, 926 save percentage. But guys like, you know, who I really like, you know, Luke, Luke Hughes has stepped in, has definitely been flawless, you know. I, I just think that, you know, in the guys like Nick Blackenberg, you know, your captain and N Nolan Moyle and I like little, J you know, Jacob Trescott. I mean, it, it's it's a nice mixture and, and people sleep on Johnny Beecher, but this kid is a number one draft pick too. I mean, it, you're losing Veneers, Rasan, Power and, and Johnson. And I know you know it as well as anybody yet because you lose guys usually at Christmas time every year, you've got to be almost, that's comes with the territory being Michigan's coach. Well, when you recruit good players, are uh, you always know you're going to have the possibility to, to lose some of these players uh, for some of the key tournaments and whatnot. And obviously this year, the Olympics uh, were, were another tournament that we weren't expecting, but just with the NHL not playing. But yeah, it comes with the territory. Anytime you recruit good players, you're going to have that, but we like this group. We played a highly skilled U.S. national development team on Wednesday, uh, you know, that has beaten Notre Dame, beaten Michigan State, uh, beat North Dakota, the U.S. national program. And we found a way to beat them the other night without those four guys. So uh, we do have depth, and that's what I like about this team. We've said that from day one is, is this team has a, a lot of depth on it. And, uh, you know, we're excited. It, it's going to be a huge weekend for us. Uh, you know, we're playing for a Big Ten uh, championship, regular season championship. We're three points out of first place with two games in hand. So these games, there's a lot of reason these games are huge from us, regardless of who's wearing the jersey. We talked about Michigan specifically and what you're going to see from them and what this battle brings between Michigan State and the University of Michigan. But bringing them to Detroit for this matchup, it's something that a lot of people that live in the area don't always get to see. They don't always make it to Munn or Yost to see a college hockey game. Just describe college hockey as a whole and what everybody can expect when they come down on Saturday. Well, it's just the pageantry of it, just, just the excitement, whether it's, you know, the bands, uh, to the fans, like I said, again, it, it, it's exciting when you get two fan bases that both have the opportunity to get in the building. Uh, we only have 5,800 seats here at Yost Ice Arena. Uh, we've been sold out the last, I, I believe, 12 games. So it's, it's hard to get a ticket here. The beauty of going to Little Caesars Arena is you get the opportunity to see uh, future NHL stars, you know, future NHL players on both teams uh, that will go hard against each other. It's just the excitement of it and the the action on the ice. There's so many things going on in the building when it's, and then a hockey game breaks out. So, uh, and playing at a big time NHL rink like this too, it brings out the best in your players. I know Michigan State will be anxious. Uh, they'll be excited for this game as we are. We can't wait to get down there, but I think it's a great opportunity at a great price, affordable price to come and see college hockey, which is to me, one of the fastest sports that we have at the collegiate level. Mel, we, we addressed the four Wolverines that will be uh, two on Team Canada and two on Team USA. Yet, if you really look at Team USA, it has a real state of Michigan flavor to it and a University of Michigan flavor. And I can't, you know, my buddy Justin Abdicator, he's a good Spartan and I always tease him. He's on Team USA and I, I wish him nothing but the best after that horrific injury he had last year uh, in the World Championship. But Strauss man, Stephen Kemper, what does that do for a program? Not that you need any more credibility than you already have, but how does that play into the fact when you walk into a uh, into a, a potential recruit's home? And I I heard that you've like what signed up like thirteen guys already for next season. I mean, how how does that play when you can say, look, not only do we win national championships or go to the NCAA tournament, but our guys go to the Olympics as well. 
it's a it's a huge honor for the players who get to uh, represent the country at the Olympics, and that's why uh, we are static. Even though we're you know losing four pretty good players from this year's team, uh, it, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So, but no doubt about it. I mean, that's the type of character people uh, that we recruit here to Michigan. They're not only good hockey players, but they're good people. And anytime you're in a short tournament like the Olympics, you want to make sure you have character individuals on that team because it is it's short you don't have a lot of time to mold players you can't trade players or send one down that's your group and no doubt about it we sell that i mean strauss man's a a great goal he was in the ross business school here stephen camper i think is the oldest player uh, on the u.s olympic team and i'm hearing he might be you know in the leadership group if not the captain but a tremendous individual has won a stanley cup so here's a guy who played at Michigan, got his degree, went on to win the Stanley Cup, and now is an Olympian. But uh, that's the caliber of player and the type of person uh, that we wrote, like to recruit here at the University of Michigan. People who are going to play at the highest level, whether it's the NHL or possibly at the Olympics, but also have the character that people want them on those teams. Uh, we're very proud of those uh, individuals, and uh, we just can't wait to uh, see them in the championship game, Canada and the U.S., that's what we're hoping for here. And don't don't ask me who I want to win, Art. <laughs> that okay, I, won't, I, 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 I won't. But promise me one thing. No man bun. No man bun. I don't understand <laughs> it. I don't get it. I, I I don't know what that is, but please don't. don't. Well, we had a player, Nolan Moyle, who you had on yeah. the other night, Nolan. Uh, he's letting his go a little bit. He actually had a man bun, and I, I was kidding him. Did he have to take it? take it apart to put his helmet on or do you wear the man bun underneath the helmet i don't have to worry about that but uh, <laughs> i think he told me he takes it apart but uh, no I'm, I'm going with it you know with uh, we've been you know january we had our, our best month since uh 2010 we went uh uh what was it seven one and one or seven oh and one in january something like that so uh, i'm not going to get a cut for a while we're just going to i'm not superstitious but i'm not going to get a cut for a while how's that i like that we should have a competition between the two of you because seriously you both can grow some of the best hair i've ever seen and maybe we'll have a man bun competition next time we talk oh, no way best. man buns are done no way <laughs> oh come on now you probably look pretty pretty good with a man bun i, think. You would. Yeah, well, I am a, i thank you Mel. i know i am handsome so i i'll take that as a compliment Mel, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me here. Go Blue!